G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Today, we are going to be doing a video centered around some of the more underrated, perhaps, or underappreciated talents that I think exist around the AFL. I've got 10 players here that I think are probably a little bit underrated for their talent, or perhaps they're just suggestions of players to keep an eye out for. In some cases, you're gonna be well aware of them. In other cases, maybe not so much. So the vague criteria for this video was, I was looking for players that are 21 and under, and in some cases, they're, you know, they've already got a bit of a profile, but I try to look for the ones that aren't necessarily household names yet. Obviously, there's a lot of under 21 talents that more or less are already, you know, Harry Sheasel, Nick Dacos. Obviously, I've tried to look a little bit past that level of talent and pick up a few guys that I think are going to be guns uh, that perhaps don't have that same profile. So I'm gonna go through them one by one in no particular order. If you could do me a favor though, uh, before I get into it, if you don't mind, considering subscribing to the channel if you enjoy the content or perhaps if you've just discovered me, it's a channel full of uh, AFL content and a little bit of cricket over the summer too. I've set a goal of trying to get to 25K subscribers by the end of the year and I'm halfway there. Well, sort of, I'm halfway from 24K. Um, so it's been a great period of growth, but if anyone is enjoying the content and hasn't subscribed, please do so. So let's get into the first player on this list of 10. Like I said, no particular order. And uh, this player, I think, has probably got a bit of a profile, especially the Crows fans. But I'm going to start with Luke Pedler. And he was a first round draft pick. He went at pick 11 in the 2020 draft. And uh, he's a bit of a, he's a forward now. I think he was drafted as a, maybe a forward mid, uh, someone with genuine midfield potential. Going into this season, he'd only played just the five games, had only kicked one goal, and then we saw a bit of an explosion of output from Luke Pedler, where he kicked 25 goals from 21 games. And what I like about him is well, he's obviously hitting the scoreboard as a small medium forward. Those are good numbers. But I do like he's got a bit of a balance to his contested game, wins a good percentage of his possessions as contested, and uh, tackles and applies the defensive pressure as well. So I do see attributes there of Pedler becoming a more of a genuine midfielder in the years to come. But that sort of output as a forward alone is very, very impressive. So I think Luke Pedler projects as someone that will have a good AFL career and potentially he will take the next step in 2024. Next up, I want to talk about Fremantle's Heath Chapman. Now, a lot of the players in this video that I'll talk about probably came off a strong 2023 season. Heath Chapman is the example of someone who didn't, largely due to injury. He just played the three games, but I do think he is an underrated talent nonetheless. He is a 193 centimeter, sort of oversized uh, running defender slash wingman, but in some cases plays as an undersized key back as well. So he's got some genuine versatility. His running carry is really strong and he's defensively sound as an intercept player too. I still think, despite obviously a quiet season in 2023, if he gets over his injuries, he still projects as a good quality long-term AFL player. We saw him play 17 games last year, and he had 19 possessions a game and six marks. And I think there was a rising star uh, nomination for him in round eight of 2022. And in that game, he accumulated 25 possessions and went at 92%. So not your usual sort of lockdown defender, obviously showing an ability to not only rebound, win the football, but obviously use it really, really well. So I think if he gets through his uh, his injury battles, I don't know the specifics, but I think he'll be set for a big year in 2024. Next, I will shout out Judd McVee. Now, Melbourne have done a good job of accumulating some young talent over the years, but this one is a pretty good pick given he was pick 18 in the 2021 rookie draft. And again, because he had such a good solid year this year, he probably will be known to most of you, but a little bit underrated as a 185 centimeter primarily a defender, but also with some midfield potential. But he saw an opening in their best 22 this year in the absence of Christian Salem early in the year, debuted this year and played 25 games and he won a rising star nomination in round 18 of this season. And he was also the top intercept player among any other rising star eligible player. Additionally, among that same cohort, he was third for rebound 50s as well. So he intercepts a play, he sets play up and rebounds as well. And I think he has become a legitimate best 22 player for the Ds and therefore definitely an underrated talent. Next, I want to talk about Paul Curtis from the North Melbourne Football Club. Now, North Melbourne have a whole bevy of under 21 talent now. Obviously, they've had access to the draft picks um, and they've, so they've selected well in recent times, I would have to say. But one player that there's, was a little bit left field was in pick 35 in the 2021 draft, Paul Curtis as a 185 centimeter, skillful and opportunistic forward, I would say. Now, it felt like in the two games against West Coast this year, this guy was really annoying me. And I say that respectfully because he played really well. Uh, but over the course of the year, he played 21 games and kicked 17 goals as a young forward in a team that was obviously struggling. I think that 
that's fairly solid output. And his best game this year was when he kicked four goals in, I think it was a quarter, against the Eagles at Optus Stadium to just about take the game away from the Eagles. So I see genuine potential there with Paul Curtis. A little bit of uh, perhaps an underrated talent if you don't watch North Melbourne a lot. The next underrated young talent around the league that I have is one from the West Coast Eagles in at Ryan Marrick, the rawest and newest player among any other player on this list, given he was pick one in the mid-season draft. The most recent one, that is, and obviously still a very skinny and raw kid. So he's a bit of an undersized and very, very skinny key forward prospect at 193 centimeters. I presume he will continue to grow potentially a bit closer to that 195, 196 magic number, but very, very skillful in the lead and doesn't rely on... Uh, having a, a strong contested game yet. And I think the actual best feature of Ryan Marrick's game is his field kicking, and he probably could be utilized as a bit of a rebounding defender as well. So one to keep an eye on. Hasn't set the world on fire, but the raw talent there is very obvious. The next player I want to nominate is another key position player, this time at the opposite end of the ground, uh, in James O'Donnell from the Western Bulldogs. And the more I looked into this guy's story, the more insane it actually is. So first of all, he's Simon O'Donnell's son. I just realized that in preparation for this video, who had grown up uh, playing cricket and uh, was signed as a Cat B rookie for the Western Bulldogs this year because he hadn't been registered with the team for three years, obviously choosing to play cricket. Decided that he would have a throw at the stumps in terms of football, to use a terrible pun there, but the Bulldogs took a punt on him. He debuted in his first season and he is now arguably a best 22 player for them. And he's a 197 centimeter key position defender. Obviously that was a position of need for the Western Bulldogs, particularly long term. He played 12 games in his first season and I think most would argue that he will be there in the Western Bulldogs round one side for 2024. So it projects as a pretty good talent and the, his pathway to getting into the AFL is actually crazy. Next, I want to nominate another mid-season draftee in Jai Menzi from the Essendon Football Club who was taken in 2022's mid-season draft. Funnily enough, it wasn't even Essendon's first pick. They took Dan Brozio, and then they took Jai Menzi as a 180 centimeter small forward. He played two games later that year in his first half a season, if that makes sense. But then he's played 21 games in the following season and produced a really good output of 23 goals. And remember, he's, he's the same age as the 2021 cohort. So measuring that output as a small and young small forward, that is really, really good. And he's also backed that up with some pretty good pressure, averaging about two and a half tackles a game. He's the best 22 player for Essendon, and I think probably in terms of his profile outside of Essendon, he's still building that. Uh, but I was surprised to learn that he'd kicked so many goals this year, which is a great effort. Next up, we'll move along to the Sydney Swans and talk about a player that I have mentioned before on this channel in Angus Sheldrick, another one of these players that was a first round draft pick in 2021. But being a, a nuggety inside mid, it's taken a little bit longer for his attributes to be able to translate at AFL level. So he's just played the nine games and he's very, very nuggety. 179 centimeters and 88 kilos. The only difference between him and an actual nugget is that his body doesn't consist of any chicken. But in the nine games that he's played, I think he's shown flashes of brilliance and his best performance was a two goal and 29 possession game against the West Coast Eagles. Admittedly, every Sydney player had a good game, but there was a real block there where he'd started to win a little bit more of the ball as he was deployed more as a midfielder this season. We saw him obviously get more possessions, win more clearances and tackle. So I think he's starting to reach that developmental stage where his traits can be really beneficial to an AFL team at the highest level. So I think Angus Sheldrick will have a good year and start to develop a bit more of a profile outside of people who watch Sydney a lot. Then let's talk about the Hawthorne Football Club, another team with a young list and uh, you know a whole host of good quality talents. But Connor McDonald is one player that is probably better than some people realize if they don't watch Hawthorne a lot. He's a 185 centimeter half forward taken at pick 26 in the 2021 draft. And his output has really come along this year and he's become a core contributor for Hawthorne in many senses. He's played 41 games now, which is usually around the mark where players really start to lift their output. Biggest feature of his game is he, he's very involved in like key links for Hawthorne in terms of their transition and moving the ball inside 50. What I like about him is that he kind of takes the game on and on top of that, his ball use is very good too. His best performance was a two goal and 28 possession game against the Brisbane Lions earlier this year, along with three marks as well. So we're starting to see him take pretty strong linear improvement and I think we can expect to see continued improvement in 2024. 
Then let's talk about another player from the 2021 draft, uh, not dissimilar player, in Jake Saligo, who went at pick 36 to the Adelaide Crows as a 180 centimeter, kind of a small forward who's played increased uh, midfield time as time has gone past. He's accumulated 37 games now and is a clear best 22 player for Adelaide. So the second Crows player on this list, they drafted well, particularly outside of the first round, I would argue. He finished the year really strongly after we saw increased output. I think he had a bit more midfield time. His last two games, he had 20 28 possessions, and then I think in the final game against West Coast, he had 24 possessions and kicked two goals as well. So with that kind of gradual build, potentially more increased midfield time going forward, we could see Jake Saligo take the next step as well, considering he will pass 50 games in 2024, and I would say this guy is an underrated talent. So there you have it, guys. That is me plucking 10 underrated young players from around the league. Of course, there's more than that. Obviously, I, I try to stay away from you know, like really recent draftees. A lot of 2021 draftees in here, some more recent, but uh, generally I'd like to see them a little bit at AFL level. But of course, there's gonna be more than I mentioned and I did leave a whole heap of players out. So as always, I welcome your comments in the comment section below, letting me know who do you think belongs on this list as well. I tried to keep it to 10 uh, just to keep the video at a reasonable time length. But I look forward to your input. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.